do you know that you need to move more, that you need to get more steps in? Maybe you want to lose weight or feel healthier, but you sort of know this lack of movement that you're having might be even causing pain, might be causing weakness and helping you to not have the energy you need. Well, today I'm going to be talking all about walking and movement and how to hit that daily step goal. Hi friends, and welcome to the Healthy Beyond 40 show. I'm Michelle, mama four and military wife. I have my doctorate in physical therapy and I'm an online personal trainer, health coach, and yoga teacher. Do you wish that you had more energy and could get into shape? Do you feel like you're struggling to lose weight? Maybe you've tried a diet before, but it just wasn't sustainable, and now you don't know how to get started. We're gonna look at health holistically here, and most importantly, keep things simple and quick. If you're ready to develop healthier habits, exercise consistently, and lose weight sustainably without long workouts or following strict diets, then you're in the right place. In this podcast, I bring together my expertise with real life strategies. No magic pill here, so lace up those shoes and get moving. All right, so today we're gonna be talking all about walking and the movement and what's the difference between walking versus exercise. And I really love talking about this movement piece because it's really the foundation. We need to move more. We live in a very sedentary society. It's easy for us to sit at a desk all day and really not do much movement. And so it's really important to first start with this basis of figuring out how to get more movement into your life. And before we dive into this, I just wanna tell you about a free challenge that I'm gonna have coming up starting September 18th. It's gonna be held in my Healthy Beyond 40 Facebook group, so make sure you guys join there. There's gonna be a link down below or you can just head right to the Facebook app and search Healthy Beyond 40. And this challenge is going to be for five days, so for one week, and we're gonna be focused on water, and movement. And these two things sound so simple, but they really give us a good foundation to start taking care of our bodies and be healthier. I've ran this challenge quite a few times before and it's always a hit and people ask for it again. So I'm excited to offer it again. We're going to be focusing on a daily water goal. Everybody is going to get to set their own because I don't think there's one right amount for everybody. Our body sizes are different. What we're drinking to start with is different. So everyone can set their own water goal and they're also gonna set their own movement goal. So that could be in steps you wanna do a day, in minutes you wanna do a day or even miles. But that way you're setting a goal that you are able to achieve that you can stay consistent with. So head to my Facebook group to join that challenge and make sure that you share this challenge with some friends. It's more fun when we have people doing it together, especially people that we know. So I love to spread the word, so invite some friends. So first, I want to talk about what is the difference between movement versus exercise? Because a lot of times we'll just clump those both as exercise together and that's fine, but I want you to understand this difference. So exercise is when our muscles are burning. We're feeling that burn in our muscle. We might even get sore. Like I currently did a harder workout a couple days ago and my muscles are feeling a little sore. And while I was doing that workout, my muscles were burning. I could feel them working. I could feel that burn. Also, when we're doing exercise, we may get out of breath. So it may be more of a cardio challenge. So exercise, we want those muscles burning and or that heart rate up working that cardiovascular system. Movement is when we're just moving around. So think when you're just walking around your house from your kitchen to your living room. You're just getting steps and you're just moving your body. So this is where that daily step goal comes in. So when we're doing our daily steps, we don't necessarily have to be doing it super fast where we're getting out of breath and we're getting winded. We just want to get more movement in. And the great thing about movement is that it doesn't stress our metabolism like cardio can. So that's why we really want a lot of movement and we want a little bit of exercise and that helps to keep our metabolism happy. It helps to keep our body from getting stressed out. So depending how you're doing walking, it may or may not be movement. So keep that in mind as you're walking and as you're trying to build it up. So sometimes you may wanna do a brisk walk and walk faster, get that heart rate up. And sometimes you may just wanna go on a slower walk. So you're just getting more movement in. You're just really enjoying that time. So I personally like to do a mix of both. So sometimes I will go on a faster walk or a hike that might have hills and then different parts I might be getting a little more out of breath. And then other times I like to just go on more of a leisure walk and maybe I am walking and talking with my husband or just really like enjoying nature and using that as a time to de-stress. And then as we're talking about walking, I'm gonna talk about tracking. 
And before we get into tracking how many steps you're doing or anything like that, I want you to keep in mind that tracking, like having a watch is not a magic solution. Also having a scale, maybe a fancy scale that shows your body fat and all these different things or having certain equipment or even getting new walking shoes, whatever the thing is, that's not necessarily going to help you walk more, exercise more, get healthier. What matters is that you take action because I have seen people buy different equipment, buy different watches, buy different shoes, buy all these fancy things, but yet they don't really take the action that they need to. So they're not seeing a change. So you can go back to basics and really have nothing and just move more. I mean, have a decent pair of shoes so your feet and your body doesn't hurt, but it's all about taking action. And if you feel really stuck, that you're maybe getting some new things, new devices, new shoes, a new watch, whatever it is, but you're still not following through, I want you to think about what is holding you back. What is holding you back from doing what you want to? And a lot of times, especially if you're stuck here, I encourage you to do health coaching and get a personal trainer, connect with me so I can help you work through this so that you're no longer stuck where you are so that you don't maybe start and then stop because there's usually something that's holding you back. There's some resistance that you need to work through so you can start staying consistent. And sometimes it's just getting that extra support and accountability you need to show up like, hey, I'm going to do this. I'm here to do this. And I have someone to encourage me along the way. So if you guys want to do that, there will be a link down below if you want to set up a call and see what it would be like to work with me. Now, so you can count your steps with a watch. There's lots of different watches. I personally don't have a fitness watch. And I don't think there is anything wrong with getting it. Quite a bit of my clients have it, and I think it can be really great. But I just want to be a little more tuned out of electronics. Like, I don't want to know all the time when a message pops up. I don't need to know every step I'm taking each day. But sometimes that can be helpful and motivating to people. So I want you to think, is it going to be something that is helpful and motivating to me? Or is it going to be more of an obsession? Am I going to feel bad if I'm not getting enough steps or something's not going right? Or I also know people who track their sleep on those watches and then it's super stressful if they're not sleeping well. So you have to really notice how you respond to that and if it's actually good for you. Now, since I don't have a Apple watch or any of those fitness tracker watches, what I do sometimes is on my phone, I have an iPhone and I'm able to track my steps on there. It automatically does it for me. And I didn't even know this was a thing until my daughter showed me one day. I'm like, oh my goodness, this thing has been tracking me. And I had no idea. So you can either go on an Apple phone to the fitness app or the health app and Androids have the same thing too. And you will be able to see what your steps are for the day. It will also show you the distance that you're going. So I find this super helpful because sometimes I do like to know, like just in general, like how many steps am I getting a day? Am I really moving enough? So that can be a good tool to look at without getting a watch. So I just want to pause real quick and tell you guys about Organifi. So I've been using Organifi's green juice most mornings. Sometimes I have it with lemon in it. Sometimes I put it in my smoothie and it's been a really great way to start the day. And it's also dramatically helped with my energy and my stress levels. So they put different adaptogen herbs in there that help to decrease your cortisol, help you to respond better. I'm a big fan of herbs and that's really what our medicine used to be. It's based on herbs and plants and even our pharmaceuticals are based from herbs and plants. So it's a really nice way to fuel your body and decrease your stress. If you guys want to check it out, use the code HEALTHY20 to save 20% off your first order. There's also going to be a link in the description for it. So let's dive into a little bit more about length and step goals. So first, we all hear about 10,000 steps a day, and that can be a great goal, especially when we want to move more, exercise less, so we're not stressing our metabolism. So 10,000 steps, if we want to break that down into miles, it really depends on your stride length. So that is the length from foot to foot. So how far are you stepping? So you can think of different times when you're doing a pretty slow walk, you're probably taking short steps. When you're walking faster, you're taking longer steps. So it's going to affect that a little bit. So most people, about 2,000 to 2,500 steps equals one mile. 
So if we're getting to that 10,000 steps, it's gonna be about four to five miles depending on your step length. So we can use that as a gauge of how much do we wanna walk each day. So I think the 10,000 steps a day is a good starting place, but you don't have to start there. If you guys have been listening to this podcast, you probably know what I'm gonna tell you right now, and that is to start small and build your way up because the most important thing is staying consistent. So whether you are, let's say someone is currently doing 2,000 steps a day on average, and if I want that person to stay consistent, we're probably not gonna set a 10,000 day step goal. We might start with 3,000, 4,000, and then slowly build that up. So one, especially if your body isn't strong right now, if your body hasn't been conditioned, you wanna allow those muscles to wake up and start to use them so you don't get super sore. So that's why we wanna start on that smaller end and work our way up. And remember with these steps, you can get your steps in just walking around your house, doing things around your house, going to the grocery store, parking further away, and you might also need to go on some intentional walks to get more steps in, especially depending on what your job is. And sometimes if you're feeling that resistance to do it, I want you to think, how could I make this a little more enjoyable? How could I make it a little more fun? So these are some different things that I do when I go on a walk. The first thing I do before I go on the walk is I just pause real quick and pray and ask what I need, like tune into my body. What does it need right now? Does it need silence? So maybe I can just pay attention to what's around me. Maybe I can hear nature. Maybe I really need that silence to sort of calm my nervous system down. Maybe I need to listen to music. Do I need upbeat music or calming music? Maybe I'm in a learning mood and I wanna listen to a podcast or a book. Or maybe I wanna talk with a friend. But really taking the opportunity to pause and decide what you need on this walk. So you don't have to think that you always need to listen to music or always need to listen to a podcast. Really change it up and tune it into what you actually need. Start paying attention to your body. So I hope that this is inspiring you to move a little bit more. Maybe pay attention to how much you are walking, how many steps you are taking in a day and trying to figure out ways for you to increase that daily step goal. Remember, set your own step goal and slowly work it up. So if you guys want to head to my Facebook group, Healthy Beyond 40, and share what your step goal for the day is or the next day. And let's work on hitting that goal and figuring out how to move our bodies and enjoy it while we're doing it. Our bodies are a blessing to us. We get these amazing bodies and we need to take the time to take care of them, to move them, to help them function like they were intended to. I also encourage you to head to that Facebook group so you can join the Water and Movement Challenge. It's gonna be free, starts on September 18th. Invite some friends so we can have a really fun community. I'm also gonna have prizes for this challenge because it always makes it so much fun and I love to bless all my listeners and all the people who do the challenge. All right, guys, if you guys need anything, if you guys need some encouragement, some coaching, if you are feeling stuck, then send me a message or sign up for a free call with me down below.